Good morning, good morning, you guys. It's day number 77 of my stay medical to 50. 100 day journey I've been on for a little while now. Changing my body, my mind, pretty much watching whatever happens. Thanks so much for being here, following my journey, offering encouragement along the way. So many of you have been uh, an instrumental part of this process, and I wanted to acknowledge you here today that uh, you played a big role in the journey, being here on my walk and talks, uh, when I'm on my morning walks. I always bring you guys along for the ride. We have a nice little conversation talking about all kinds of things, mindset, types of things, because I feel like this is where we break down, isn't it? Is you get excited about a journey, you get excited about something you want to do, you set out the mo- or set in motion the things you're gonna do, but you didn't really prepare yourself, you didn't really kind of put your head in the right space. And any of you who desire to start on a health program, let me highly encourage you. And I really think this is the next wave of what's gonna happen in the health world. Forever it's been focused on diet. Oh, do the Atkins diet, do the paleo diet, do the keto diet, do the carnivore diet, do the this diet, the that diet. I think the next wave is gonna say, Let's get your mind right first. And if we get your mind right, then you choose the diet that's right for you at that point. But no diet is gonna supersede whatever work you need to put on yourself when it comes to your mind, getting that on straight. So that's that's just a little aside today. I feel like all this mindset talk that I've been doing on these walk and talks, it's the kind of thing that I feel like is gonna be the future of any health journey that people go on. But the fun part about mindset is it's applicable to every part of life. And so that's what I do here on these walk and talks. And I have a great topic today. I always think they're great topics, but <laughs> let's see what you guys have to say. And remember, this is a participation type of show. Because if you don't participate, when Jimmy stops talking, He's out of stuff to talk about, but I can always bounce off of what you say. So if you've got thoughts as I'm sharing, please feel free to share them below and uh, we'll get to those in due course. All right, so today's topic, anticipate good things are coming. I think we live in a world these days where the anticipation is not of good things. The anticipation of what's coming is all about dread. It's about unfulfillment. It's not having an expectant attitude that good things are coming. It's not expecting that success will happen. It's just kind of existing. And I've talked about this before, but I want to underscore it here today pretty heavily. If you're just existing, you're not living. So start living. Don't allow yourself to just go through the motions of life. Life is meant to be lived. Life is meant to be enjoyed. Life is meant to think about and anticipate all of the great things that all the effort you put into your life deserves. And we know that. We know that on an empirical level that if you're a good person and you do good things, and you put in the effort that at some point some good things are going to happen to you. The problem is we never anticipate the good things. And let me tell you what the anticipation does. When you anticipate good things, that actually helps them come about. Because if you never anticipate them and you always think your life is a drag and that the doldrums of life are the way it's always going to be, guess what? It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you always feel bad, if you always think bad, if you always think nothing's ever going to get better, don't be surprised when, gee, I don't know, nothing gets better. I don't know why this is so hard for people to understand that get stuck in that negative loop. They're like, oh, I just wish good things would happen. Well, what good things are you anticipating? Well, nothing ever good happens, and so I'm not anticipating anything. Okay, I think we've identified the problem. 
And it's at that point you determine what kind of life you want to live. You want to keep going through the motions. You want to keep subliminally with your thoughts and even the things you verbalize telling yourself that you're never going to have good things. You want to keep keep down that doldrum path. Just keep thinking those thoughts. But all of it comes back to you have that control about what you think about. You have that control over the kind of future you want. And if you do anticipate good things are going to happen and that they're coming for you, guys, it is a self-fulfilling prophecy in that way. At that point, I've seen it play out in my life. I've had some really horrific stuff happen to me. And in the midst of that, it's very hard to get out of it. I get it. Um, But at some point, you have to kind of shift your mind and start anticipating that things will turn around. That's what gets you up in the morning and keeps you going. Good morning. And so, do you do that? Do you anticipate that good things are coming? Let me tell you, it is a game changer for your mindset. If you start having an anticipation that good is happening, no matter where you are in your life right now, you you could be going through the shittiest experience of your entire life right this moment. It could be some of the worst things that you or anyone else you know has ever gone through. And for that, if you are going through that, I'm just here to tell you, you're going to make it. You're going to make it through. It won't last forever. And now more than ever, you need to anticipate that good things are coming. And here's the fun part of being in the midst of a state like that. You are at your lowest. And when you're at your lowest, there's only one way. And that's up. And I want you to remember this time, even if you're not at your lowest of lows, but you're in a downtime, I want you to remember what it feels like in this very moment that you're down. How do you feel? What is your brain telling you? Physically, are there pain spots that pop up? Mentally, does your mind race in every direction? If those are all the things you're feeling right now in the midst of a low, you're not going to forget them. And you shouldn't forget them because it's in these moments when you need to anticipate good things are coming more than ever. Give yourself that hope. Give yourself, and this is gonna step on some toes too, give yourself the truth that you're not gonna be where you are forever. Trust me, I know. I went through two years of an anguish, of an experience that started in 2019 and it ended earlier this year. I get it. There are things that are just in the moment so incredibly unbearable. You don't know how you're gonna keep your head up. You don't know how you're gonna put one step in front of the other. It's a bit too much to bear. I get it. I have been there, but What I did in the midst of it was I did what I'm teaching you here today. Anticipating good things are coming. And here's the fun part. I'm on the other side of that down experience. Have been for many months now. And that anticipation of good things is now starting to happen. I've got things happening in my life, both professionally and personally, that is the manifestation, you guys, of all those days that I knew better was coming. I knew good things were going to happen in the midst of that very traumatic experience I went through. It didn't feel that way, not even close. 
didn't even get a taste of what anything other than that malaise was like. And we all have those moments in our lives, don't we? And it's in the midst of those moments you need this message that I'm giving you today more than ever. But anticipation of the good things, they are coming, you guys. Do you do that? Do you pump yourself up? Do you tell yourself these messages that as bad as it seems in the moment, it's really not as bad as you think? And that as heavy as those tough times are, that good things are sure to come? I forget where I heard it, but somebody in my family always said, well, when you go through bad stuff, you'll go through a lot of good stuff to offset it. If that's true, I got a lot of good stuff coming my way. <laughs> I really do. And I know you guys too, too. Is this resonating, guys? Is this kind of hitting what you're going through? I mean, I think we're all going through some pretty difficult times with what's all happening in the world right now. It can be depressing. It can seem hopeless. Maybe some of you lost your jobs. Maybe some of you had other difficulties pop up. Sickness. All kinds of things can kind of get you down and knock you off your feet and make you wonder if there is any hope. If there is anything good that's going to happen. Just know you're not alone. Just know that others have been there and gone through this process. And they have overcome and they have come out the other side and are doing fantastic. Doesn't mean there'll always be those moments. Doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. But it will happen. I think if your heart is right, you're doing good things. You're living your life honorably. You're doing all the things that you're supposed to do. I just have a strong belief within me that good things are always going to come. But you have to be expected. You have to anticipate it. And I don't think enough people do. So welcome in, guys, if you just joined us. I'm on day 77 of my Stay Badical to 50, my 100-day journey, seeking to change my body, my mind, kind of watch what happens. In the last days, just a few more weeks left, and this bad boy is done. Uh, this walk and talk has been a popular thing during this Stay Badical. So I will probably keep doing the walk and talk in some form or, or another. I do love just coming on here chatting with you guys about topics. And so what do you think about this topic today? Do you anticipate that good things are coming? If you're going through a really tough spot in your life, does that get you up in the morning expecting, knowing that no matter how bad your life is at the moment, it's going to be better? That good things will happen or are you of the mindset that well bad things just keep happening and as soon as I get out of it one bad thing another bad thing comes it's just bad 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 woe is me I'll never get out of it and I posit the theory that if you allow your mind to go down that path of thinking bad things always happen and that you go from one bad to the other, could it be that you're not anticipating good things? And if you simply did that, watch how magically some of those bad things stop happening with such frequency. It's a thought to ponder I'm throwing out there, but let's see what you guys have to say. I'm gonna pop back to the very top. Good morning, Linda. Thank you as always for being here. Uh, good morning, Sharon. Get it. Jimmy, you are getting it done. Yes. Just a few more days left, Sharon. I knew I would get to 100. I didn't realize along the way that I would have all the bumps and bruises and obstacles thrown at me that I've had. Um, but right now, I feel great. It's 35 degrees. I'm in shorts and t-shirt. 
I have no pain in my back, no pain in my ankles. The blisters have hardened up, so no pain there. I am walking really fast. There are some days I've been on this journey that I was like, oh boy. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get out there and walk today. Because my feet and my ankles and my toes and back and all the rest just didn't feel that great. But you know what I did? I anticipated that things were going to get better. And I was right. Things have gotten better. And I'm in a good place, so thank you for always supporting me. Sandra says, my husband and I do walking tours of cities when knee arthritis flared up. I was depressed that this would come to an end. Carnivore alleviated it. Yes! I think we always look at things through the prism of where we are in the moment. So... I've been talking to various girls uh, about possibly going on a date with them and that kind of thing. And a couple of them noted that I have strange sleep hours. So I go to bed at like 8 o'clock and then I'm up super early in the morning. Sometimes like 2.30, 3 o'clock, 3.30, something like that. And they're like, well, we won't work because your sleep hours are so funky. And I'm like... You don't think I could adjust my sleep hours? I could easily adjust my sleep hours. I do those hours because I'm a bachelor. I'm all by myself. I got nobody to get up for, nobody to stay up for. So I just live. But they had it in their mind that where I'm at now is where I will always be. And that's kind of silly. So needless to say, we never got anywhere with those girls. <laughs> But you never stay in the same place, do you? And for you, Sandra, that's great. You could have said, well, I guess the city walk tours are over because of the pain. But no, you sought out a solution. There's always a solution to the issues. And you found yours, so kudos to you. That's awesome. Sadie says, good morning, Jimmy. It's not cold where you're at. It's getting colder here in Atlanta. Oh, yeah, it's 35 degrees, sweetheart. <laughs> it's very cold, but Jimmy likes the cold. If you watched me at the beginning of this day, Batical to 50, September 1st, September, it was still in like the upper 80s, low 90s on many days. And I was dying out here. I mean, I was just pouring sweat. And when I first started, I was doing two walks a day. Not just the morning walk, but an afternoon walk. And it was that afternoon one that was killing me. So I just, I could barely breathe. It was so hot. So now it's the other end of the temperature. And Jimmy's like, this is my jam. So I get a little bit of cold thermogenesis doing this along with the walk. So I do enjoy that. So yesterday they were supposed to deliver the Morozco Fords, that's that ice tank, the ice bath thing I ordered many moons ago. Um, it was supposed to come yesterday, but they missed the shipment. So now they're telling me it's coming today, sometime between 10 and 1. So when I get it set up, they say it takes uh, a couple days for the ice to develop. So when it comes today, I will fill it up with water and turn it on and get it to start developing ice and all the things it's going to do. Then I'm going out of town tomorrow afternoon. I'm gone all day Thursday, and then I'm coming back Friday morning. So when I get back on Friday, I will likely do a demo, definitely sometime over the weekend if I miss Friday, but do a demo of being inside that thing. If you've never seen this, Morozco Forge, it literally creates a sheet of ice. You know, a nice little break, breakable sheet of ice. And you break through the ice, you get in it, and you got your cold thermogenesis. And no, I'm not crazy. It is a thing. Go look up ice baths. Go look up Wim Hof, W-I-M-H-O-F. 
and you'll see what I'm talking about. But yes, it is much colder here in Spartanburg, South Carolina, just three hours away from Atlanta. Uh, Sandra says, health is everything. I now have hope and anticipation of many good things to come because health is mine. Yes. Yes, the good things that you think about in the context of a health journey. No pain for you, Sandra. Weight loss for other people. Coming off of medications. All of those good things that you anticipate, they actually beget even more good things. Improve your quality of life. Able to do things that you thought you wouldn't be able to do. Giving yourself more confidence. So that's the cool thing about anticipating good things are coming, you guys. Because whatever good things you anticipate, you're not even thinking about the half of it. You're only thinking about the things that are top of mind. But there are a cascade of domino effect good things that come from when you do accomplish the good things you think about. So think that through as well. That is, it's not just the good thing you're thinking. There's a lot of things that can happen and will happen. You just need to get your mind there. Uh, bulletproof coconut. Go, Jimmy, go, go, go. Walking, ice shivering, and then fire. <laughs> I always love your emojis, bulletproof. Yes, I do love this cold walk. What's funny is I've done this walk now 77 days. And there's usually a ton of people during the weekdays that come out here. There's one family, the mama told me one time, she, all she did was just started walking and her three kids were around her. That's all she added was just walking and she lost 70 pounds. Um, I haven't seen them in a while. I wonder if it's too cold in the mornings and so they wait till later in the day to walk. But yeah, it's... Uh, it's a cool, and other than the cars driving by and it being so noisy, it's a really nice walk. I still desire to find a quieter place to walk. Makes it a little easier. I don't know if I've told you guys before, but I'm a hyper sensor, so I smell things, I hear things, stronger than most people. I taste things. Um, and so when they soar by me, Think about whatever noise level you think it is, times 10. Like that right there. That was a pretty soft one, but it was still pretty intense. So when those big trucks come by and it's like, ah, ah, it's like, Arr. that's why dogs barking scare me too. Because it sounds like they're so much louder than they really are. Oh, the joys of hypersenses. Eating clean keto. Thanks, Jimmy. I really needed this message today. Good. I was hoping there would be at least one person that needed to be told to anticipate the good things that are coming. We're not meant to go through bad things feeling so bad. That doesn't mean you should not feel bad things. Don't, don't misunderstand me. If you're going through truly bad things, lament what's happening. But lamenting and wishing things were better and wanting things to go another way, those are all healthy. Where it goes off the rails is where you say, well, nothing ever goes right. Well, that's not true. And you start talking bad about yourself. Well, I just miss, I'm so stupid and da da da. No, that's not true. We have to reframe the way we talk to and about ourselves. And I've been bad at it myself, guys. I'm, everything I share with you is out of my experience of doing all these things that I, I tell you you shouldn't do. I've done them. I've done every one of them. I used to say some of the most ugly things about Jimmy to myself. Part of that was from my trauma where I had it verbally said to me by my dad. And so that seeps into the subconscious of my mind. And I start saying some of those same things about myself. The psychological warfare we deal with. 
I don't even think we know the half of it. Get in your own head, guys. Ask yourself why you don't anticipate those good things. Because they do come. They come if you think about them and you expect them and you want them. That's how they come about. They don't just magically appear. You have to manifest it. You have to speak it. You have to want it. And you have to believe it. And when all those things are in place, there's nothing that will stop you from having good things happen in your life. And sometimes you expect good things and you have a certain vision of what that looks like. And then when the good things start happening and they're far better than you ever imagined, there's no greater feeling, no greater feeling than that. Bulletproof Coconut, I think there is truth to the fact that the more struggle you go through leads to more success. Yes, I do feel like, thank you for bringing that point out. I do feel like that if you've been through a lot of stuff, that you're going to get a commensurate, opposite, equal and opposite reaction of good stuff with all the bad stuff you've been through. And look, I've had some good stuff happen to me. I've had a very successful book writing career. Three books hit international best-selling status. I've got a long-running health podcast um, that's been on for over a decade and a half now. Um, I've had good things happen for me. I've gotten to speak around the world. Get to make money with my mouth. A lot of people have to put in hard labor. The hardest labor I have is to talk, so talk and write. And I'm very grateful for that. It wasn't always that way though. I was in some pretty crappy jobs in my late teens, all through my 20s, and into my early 30s. I did some of the most menial tasks. But I was always hopeful and expectant and anticipatory the good things had to come because I could see my value even when others could not. Do you see your own value? Do you know what you're made of? Do you know that you're capable of whatever it is you're dreaming of doing? One of the gratifying things I'm going through right now is helping my best friend, Brittany. So Brittany and I do the One Step Deeper podcast together and so she and I are doing that podcast. We just concluded the last recording uh, of the year. And we got 48 episodes under our belt. She always wanted to be a podcaster. And now she is. Now she's a really good podcaster. And she's always wanted to write a book. And now we're writing a book together. We're in the midst of writing the manuscript. So go after your dreams and anticipate that those good things are coming. And yes, Bad things are going to still happen. Even in the midst of the anticipation of the good things, you're still going to go through some, some stuff. That's just life, guys. But bad things is not the death knell to those hopes and dreams. Bad things does not mean you need to wallow in pity. I feel like a Baptist preacher today. Bad things do not mean... You know what I'm saying, though. You've got control over it. Anticipate the good things are coming. It will serve you well. Sadie says, yes, I agree with you 100%. Positive thinking and manifestation brings about positive. Yes, and look, I don't think we need to constantly be in a positive mindset. I think there are moments to lament. There are moments to be sad. There are moments to wonder what happened process those moments process how you feel in those moments it's why i talked about earlier if you're in a low point in your life right now absorb how you feel think about the physiological reaction in your body through pain through achiness think about your mental your mindset where's your mind going to because when you're in the midst of this low it's hard to know that good's coming. But then when good gets here, guess what? You have a 
juxtaposition from what it was like when you were really down to where you are in that good place. And it makes the good place feel all the better when you've overcome. And especially when it's something that you had to persist through, like I did. Two years I went through this experience I did. Two years. And there was no way to get around the two-year time frame. The two years was always going to be two years. But I had to endure it. I had to go through it. I had to keep hoping and anticipating that better was coming. And I did. Because in the midst of it, it felt so bleak. It felt like all hope was lost sometimes. It felt like I will never get out of this and I'll never be able to have those hopes and dreams of my heart. And now that I'm out of it and now that I'm able to now see what that positive mindset, like you're talking about, Sadie, what that anticipation of the good things in the midst of all that, now I'm getting to live out what that is. And these good things are starting to happen. Some of them are still developing. They're not quite happening yet, but they're coming and it's coming soon. And that's something to look forward to, right? Kira says, I had bought this cheesy plague that says good things are going to happen. And for years I have waited and flipping that thing (laughs) off. It's not the words I had to believe it, but I believe it now. Yes, you're right. It's not just some platitude that we just throw out there. Good things are going to happen. No, they don't happen unless you want them to happen and believe they will happen and desire them to the point that your body aches for them. If you're not at that point, do you really want those things is what I would ask people. I would argue no. I would argue if you're not pining for the things that you're wanting, do you really want them? And I know you well enough, Kira. I know you do. And that's good that you've shifted your mindset over. And now you just believe. That's awesome. Not many people get there, my dear. Bulletproof coconut, the harder the struggle, the greater the reward. I believe that wholeheartedly. I've got a friend going through the Black Plague right now. She's young, so she'll survive it and everything, but she's having a pretty rough battle of it with symptoms and things. And she's like, I guess I need to get the hokey pokey now. And I'm like, really? No, you don't. You realize that your protection is going to be far greater because you went through a bout of this that was harder than most people. She said, oh, really? I said, yeah, look up the research that when you go through a tough little bout with this thing, that the amount of protection, I'm speaking heavily in code so I don't get this banned on social media, but when you get the protection uh, from getting it naturally, it's far better than the artificial so-called protection from the hokey pokey. So she looked it up and she went, holy crap, you're right. And so she got hit hard and she's getting the reward of lots of protection. And when life hits us hard, we also get lots of protection in as much as we get rewarded on the other side of that. It's like, all right, you paid your dues. You put in the time, you put in the effort. Now here's your reward. I love that. Love that, love that. (laughs) Bulletproof Bulletproof Coconut says, maybe you should open up a church. No, I don't think they want Jimmy preaching. No. I leave that to other people. (laughs) At this point in my life, I'm very happy with the platform I have to be able to get out messages that go far beyond spiritual. It's physical, it's emotional, it's psychological, it's all the things. And look, I'm still broken in a lot of ways. And I'm trying to teach through that brokenness that you're broken too, but you don't have to stay there. 
I think one of the things that prevents people from anticipating the good things are coming for them is they feel all alone in their brokenness. They don't feel like anybody else is having to endure what they're enduring. And it's simply not true. Almost anything you're going through at the moment, I guarantee you there's lots of others going through something similar. And maybe you have something very odd, rare. I guarantee you somebody will at least be able to empathize with you in some way. It may not be the same circumstance, but they know. They know. They're going through a similar but not same experience, and you're able to share in that. I have had friends lately describing things they're going through, and I share from my stories, and they're like, holy crap, it's not the same thing, but it's kind of the same mindset that we encourage each other through that. And that's what we should be doing. Bulletproof says natural protection is so strong and it's to be studied for decades, but ignored. Yeah, don't get me started on all that's happening in the world the last two years. I think most people are over it. Yours truly included. That's why you don't really see me talking a lot about it as much. I still do when it's relevant, but most people have moved on. It's here. Really can't do much about it. We're all going to get it eventually. And you just deal. Take care of your body in the meantime. Which is what I'm doing on this day, Batical to 50. Day 77. If you came in late, still trucking along, you guys. Still doing all the things. Coming into the home stretch of the end of this 100 day journey. And I'm loving it. Really loving talking to you. Too many people think they are all alone when they aren't. They do. And if you feel alone, that is a deep, dark place. And I've learned from friends, some friends, that when people go quiet and go seek solitude, they're not lonely, they're processing. So I don't automatically assume if a friend isn't talking at the moment that things are wrong. Whereas when things are wrong for me, I want to talk to everybody. That's just my nature. And so, but people can feel all alone. Not on my watch, they won't. Not if you're my friend. I will check on you. And even those friends that clam up on me, I still drop them messages to let them know I'm thinking about them. And if they need any help or need someone to talk to, I'm always there. So that's the way it should be, right? So guys, if you like the videos that I do here, pop over to my website, livinglavitalowcarb.com slash staybatical. You can see all the past videos. What is this, day 77? I probably have, well, definitely have well over 50 videos from this Staybatical, from these walk and talks. So if you like what I do here on these morning walks, definitely go check out the past ones if you've missed any. Somebody on Instagram yesterday sent me a direct message and they said, And they said that uh, they haven't seen my posts in a while. And I'm like, you do know that I post just about every day. So if you don't see my posts, just go direct to my page and subscribe. And then you'll never miss. Social media is playing way too much with people's accounts. Oh, well, all I can do is put out the work and then let people find me. Kira says the events of the world strives to divide us. I was already alone, so it wasn't that different. When 2020 happened, I was already fueled with my best diet ever, and I handled it better. Yeah, I don't want to know 
how I would have handled things, and mine happened before everything happened the last two years. Mine happened starting in 2019, so, and then the craziness of the last two years has just added on top of that. And I'd agree with you, Kira, I probably handled things about as good as I could. If my nutrition wasn't right, then it definitely would have been a lot harder. I do know that. So if you want to watch the videos, you can also watch them on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, over on uh, hashtag stay radical 250. That's how you find it all over the social media. So let me leave you with one final word. Always anticipate that the good things are coming, guys. You could be going through tough times that just seem so unbearable. Seems like the weight of the world is sitting on top of you. I've been there. I've lived that. And I've come out the other side of that. And I want you to get out the other side of that too. We're not meant to stay there. We're meant to grow and grow stronger and be better and all the things. So go do that, okay? Bulletproof Coconut, I think planning for the good things to come helps as it lets you envision them. Yes. Yes. How do good things ever happen if you don't think about them possibly happening down the road? I'm a big believer in that. I think that's very true. Kara says, with bang, being pain-free, are you going to flip the tire? Yes. So it is on the agenda, Kira, to go back to the flipping of the tire. I'm just trying to make sure everything is solvent, especially in the lower part of my body, the ankles. Because when I start lifting that tire, it's going to put a lot of pressure on those ankles again. And I'm just now getting those blisters to calm down in the pain. So once I'm kind of pain-free for a couple weeks, then I'm going to attempt to flip the tire. So wish me luck. Definitely that is on the agenda. I do want to get stronger because I know the, the muscle mass at this point in my life is going to serve me a lot better. And it might help to burn some more of this belly fat as well. So that is a goal. That is a goal. All right, guys, let me pop off of here for now. Thanks so much, as always, for watching, and we'll be back again real soon. Bye, guys.